It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Welcome everybody. Open door with Hello. Barb Hartman. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Wonderful. So good. Yeah, good. Bit, but I am here. So yes. All right. I figured you were. You're yeah. a busy man. <laughs> oh, hey, when it was late for dinner, I'm never. So yes. <laughs> I was like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Vermont Mouth and everything. How's everybody doing? Welcome. So we have some interesting uh, things going on today, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what we, we got Barb, cooking? Barb Shoop is back. And oh. um, yeah, the woman behind your life-changing video of the cloaking, right? <laughs> yeah, so the Barb's one that back. scares me to death. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hi, my guys. gal. Hello. Welcome back to the show, Porter. <laughs> so yeah, she's backstage. She's smiling. I see her. Let's go ahead and bring yeah. her on. Awesome. Hello okay. there, Barb. How are you doing? Hi, Barb. I'm good. How are you? Oh, oh. Well, she was there. She's cloaking. Barb's cloaking. There we go. There she's Hello. back. Yeah. And we'll try that again. Oh, no, no, Jack, Jack, hush, hush. That's okay. a dog man. I said, that is a dog man. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, Jack, Jack, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, no, okay. it has no, no big deal at all. Sure I'm talking oh. to. <laughs> totally no, yeah. <laughs> Jack, He's like, what's going Jack, on? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you doing, Barb? I'm doing good. good. Um, Lots of interesting happenings at your place. Oh yeah, we've uh, we just got done with a camp out this last week, and uh, in the weeks before that, there was just so much going on here leading up to it, and uh, I just knew it was going to be an awesome camp out, and it really was. It was probably one of the best we've ever had. Really cool. Yeah. That's great. We had uh, six sightings, out, uh, eight if you count the blurs that were just too fast to identify. That's so, awesome. wow. Now, tell the viewers um, how does how does it work with your campouts? How does that how does that go? How does it work? Well, I usually go into our spot on Monday and I'll pick up whatever trash there is and I'll bring in you know the canopies, the group area, the potty tent, get it all set up, and then our campers arrive whenever they're ready to throughout the week okay and we just uh, enjoy the woods and each other and we have been going to these same places for almost nine years now and we've developed quite a relationship with the forest folk and uh, I think they look forward to these things as much as we do yeah so do you go to the same spot yeah, pretty right? much okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome. but you know we're, we're right here in the Greenwater Valley so they know us pretty much wherever we go. It's it's yeah. the same clan. Now, um, your group is this is this a group of uh, you know, like in, I mean, investigators that you have been, you know, working with for a while. How does that how does that work? How do you get in your well? Group? Um, it started just uh, well, when I was very active with my YouTube channel, and we started having our campouts about nine years ago, and that's when I made a few posts looking for people who would like to join. And since then, you know, we've collected uh, some researchers, uh, experiencers, and just basically people who have felt the call to be out there. You know, mm -hmm. our goal isn't necessarily to um, produce evidence or prove anything. Our goal is to have a respectful interaction and, and learn through being in the woods and, and having them come into camp and hang out with us. So... That's, That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> no, it's awesome. No, no, it's great. No, how beautiful. We got to tell her it that story. Is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, you have to. Yeah, so Grizzly yeah. had his first sighting. Well, through a phone. Real sighting. Real sighting. Yep. You know, yeah. not the ones in the bushes and shaking the trees and throwing crap at you and all that other stuff. <laughs> so uh, I've, I'm seeing this girl. She's psychic medium. And she knows things before it happens. Of course, that's why she's got that whatever title or label. And she was like, it's getting rain or rain. And I'm like, oh, it's nice, dear. And it started raining. And she goes, it's getting ready to hell. 
And she reaches over and takes her phone and turns it over. And it starts to hell. And she goes, look how beautiful it is. And I'm like, oh, my God, no, 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 there's Bigfoot right there. 40 feet from your door right there. It's a Bigfoot. And she goes, it's beautiful, isn't it? And boom, crack, there's this big lightning and thunder. And, and she's like, isn't that beautiful? And it's starting to whoa back and forth. I'm like, I wrote your phone still. Don't know. And she's like. I see it, but isn't that beautiful, the storm? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, are you like, really? She so, sounds yes. like she belongs in our camp. Yeah, oh, yeah, man, she's she'd have a ball. Yeah, I mean, she goes out in the other woods with just like no flashlight, no nothing, and just yeah. hangs out with them. Yeah. Yeah. She's that's got awesome. them all over her property. Yeah. Congrats yeah. To yeah, her. yeah. 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 She is a, she's a, quite the clan living on her property that she has a great relationship with. Oh, she's so, something. Yeah. Good. She's used I'm to telling you. <laughs> yeah. So, hello, Chris. What's up? Yeah. So, we're, we're talking about uh, Sasquatches and clans and, how beautiful things are. <laughs> so, and talking about Barb's video that scared the daylights out of me. So, because people always said they cloaked, but they never saw it. Now we got people out in the woods chasing things that are they don't know what they've seen, but they can't find it. So they're like, I know it was there. And they're chasing around camcorders and video recorders and they can't find it. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, things are out there. Yes, they yes. definitely yep. are. So, yes, Crazy Witch, welcome. So, you're doing some yard work. Awesome. And I, oh, Twisted Witch, too. Hello. Twisted Witch. Did I miss yeah. that one? She's up there in the in the comments. Or right under Nigel. Yeah, I don't think we said hello to Oh, her. Twisted Witch. Hello there. <laughs> Can't wait to see this video. Yeah. I did pass you up. I'm sorry. See, I got so tiny up and beautiful. <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, so we had to go and tell our story everywhere. Yeah, uh, Mongrel's a big Bigfoot fan too. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I love Bigfoot. I do not like Dogman though. Mm -mm, <laughs> no, no, no. And so I, I, I get the holy water out. And I just like. Mm, mm, mm. Barb, yes, do you have any? No. Do you have any experience with Dogman at your? Have you ever seen him around or it one around um, here? You know, I think they're just they're they're hanging around with the Sasquatch here. We've had uh, experiences up the trail where. Um, Two of us saw Sasquatch and the third person saw what he described as a, a wolf that was with them on all fours. I've, you know, and I think on our last visit, I had a, a picture that I showed you of uh, a clip from years ago when I turned around and scanned behind me and there was something up on the hill behind a stump. And mm -hmm. when we zoomed in on that, it had a very dog like face. Oh. Um, I've never had any bad or scary experiences mm -hmm. with them. So mm -hmm. I just kind of figure they just hang out with the Sasquatch. Yeah, well, that's that's good. That's what, that's what I'm hoping if I ever Everybody one. I talk to that's got these creatures that live on their property, Barb, never has got any bad experiences. Mm -hmm. And Sonia's like, come on out with me. I'll take you and let you meet them. Are you freaking crazy? Now, these things can smell fear. They can smell hormones and pheromones, right? They're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Now, well, I've been see, with now, this girl since she was a child. Time, you won't be so afraid. That's yeah. what Sonia tells him. Yeah. <laughs> my, you know, they've my had luck. 30, 40 years to get me, and I'm still here. Yeah. That's what yeah. she says. That's exactly, yeah. But, you know, but, but, but say, they known her since she was a child. <laughs> and she, you know, that she's not been around men. So she's bringing a man around. And boy, you get that alpha male that's been around. Like, what are you doing with that well, guy over there? <laughs> no, uh-uh. Y'all go ahead and laugh. You all think it's funny. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sorry. <laughs> I know, hey, if human beings get jealous, you know animals get jealous. I see what happens when silverbacks get jealous of each other. <laughs> they beat the Tarzan out of each other, so... <laughs> Is that right, crazy witch? Much love you all. Hope you all done. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh my gosh. Anyways, click off that topping right there. But yeah. 
So um, yes, yeah, so Barb posted a great um, a great synopsis of what happened in a, in a short amount of time. And I want you to tell us about that. There was also some videos and some pictures and, and I'm gonna post the links in the interest of time. I'll post the links to your page and to my, and to my uh, No Drama page so people can look at it. Um, okay. Do you want me to show the video though that you emailed me about or sent, sent to me from Post Camp or? You know, with the um, little, let's see. Well, let, let, that was, hold on with that one for a few Okay, minutes. sure. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I'll, I'll tell so you go about ahead how and... things kind of started before yes, this please. camp out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, okay, so but when we had our last visit, remember I had just showed you a video where they had, the moss was torn on one of the trees out by the yes. river where something had been climbing? Yes. So actually, when I, when I found that, I didn't realize quite how fresh it was. Um, I'd gone back out there just a few days later and I was kind of surprised to see that the moss had, that had been pulled off the tree was drying. And uh, so I just kind of figured moss on a tree during wet season, you know, it's going to be just fresh no matter what. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it was drying out even though it was still raining. And, and uh, so those marks were really fresh. So then it was probably not more than a week after that, that um, it was like 1 30 at night i just turned the light off and i usually sleep with the window open here so i can listen to the crick and hear what's going on outside and, and almost immediately i hear these big feet walking down the crick the splash 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 and uh i could hear uh some grumbling as they went by the window i could hear talking that was a little farther away that i couldn't make out what it was um, a lot of movement back and forth sticks breaking and at one point you know how you get that spidey sense where all your hair just kind of stands on end and you can just feel the electricity in the air? Mm -hmm. Well, I knew that somebody was just outside the window and I started, my stomach started getting upset. And it was, you know, gradual for maybe five minutes. And I, one, I got really nauseous and then it just stopped, completely stopped. I was fine. And I, I just kind of took that as well. It was either, you know, close proximity to, some focused energy, maybe, you know, a, a little infrasound, maybe a little scanning, you know, checking me out, seeing how I'm doing. Okay. Um, at one point there was a whoop that was a little farther off and I don't hear a lot of whoops here in green water. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that went on till probably three 30 in the morning when I finally said, you know, guys, it's late. I got to <laughs> go to sleep. I hope you're all having a fine time out there. And then uh, wow. at six o'clock, Goldie got me up because, you know, she still has to go potty at the normal yeah. time. So yeah. we go out there and I took her out across the road to do her business and turned around and looked and I could see all these new prints that were all around the edge of the creek out by the bridge. So we went out with the camera and uh, got some footage of that. You could see on the other side, you could see the footprints where they had come out so fast that the feet had slid into the moss and flipped the moss over. Wow. And uh so then there was, uh, let's see, a few days later, uh, I was out uh, raking the driveway and uh, just, you know, tidying up, cleaning up the winter debris. And I came in, took a little break. Was, uh, I was getting over COVID and I didn't have a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. So I'd go out and I'd work for 15, 20 minutes and then I'd have to come in and sit down for a little bit. So I go back outside and there's sticks and glyphs and things that are kind of here on the patio and I'm thinking well did this stuff just fall from the trees in the few minutes that I've been in here so I went out and I took some pictures of that and then I went back to where I was working out on the driveway and there's a, a big leaf maple stem about so long from last season it's not even like new or fresh this is an old stem that's been embedded in the compact gravel driveway about an inch and it's standing straight up well the, this has extra significance because a friend of mine in Portland had just recently sent me a picture of exactly the same thing that she had just found in her yard uh, oh, within a week prior. So this wow. had extra significance. And I'm thinking, this is really cool. Well, then um, the next day, my husband was dropping off some firewood for the camp out and he doesn't know anything about this little vine or a big leaf maple stick that's out there. Okay. So you know, he's just throwing the firewood out. And I was happy to go see that he had not trampled it or buried it under wood, although it had <laughs> gone from straight up to leaning. So then I'm out there and I'm stacking the wood and Goldie comes walking up to this stick and she just kind of like sniffs it and uses her nose to push it straight up and then just walks away. Like this is a normal thing for dogs to do. You know, wow. it's just, <laughs> she knows things. Yeah, she, yeah. She's <laughs> Okay, wow. so that, that's weird. So then... 
right about that time, um, I we got home one night and she's in here. She's carrying on. It's like, well, she wants a carrot. She wants a carrot. So I give her carrots. Uh-huh. That's not going to make her happy. All right, you got to go potty. Let's go outside. So I take her out. She's still, that's not what she wants. She's looking at something around the corner of the porch here. And it's like, what? Mm-hmm. what is this? So I look over and here are these... I've got three rocks about so big that are round three different sizes that basically live on the porch right here. And they had been taken off the bench and dropped into the flower bed along with a a little stick about so long was stuck into the dirt beside them. And there's like this great big print right there in the dirt next to them too. And uh, so, okay, well, I see this is what you're trying to get my attention for. So, um, The next day I took a a feather and I put it in there as my offering to say thank you. And then a a few days later I had a a robin feather I found and I stuck that in there beside it. And those were both taken uh, sometime between seven and nine o'clock in the morning, about three days after I put them in there, they're just gone. And then, um, oh, well, I was out there doing more yard work. I could hear vocals. There was a, a little bit of a breeze one day. So I'm hearing this tree kind of squeaking and squealing, except the wind stops and I'm still hearing the squeaking and squealing. And there's a weird owl over here and there's a whoop over there. Well, and then I got to noticing that the trail, the trailhead that's near my cabin here, I'd hear these sounds. And then like a minute or two later, somebody would come down off the trail on a mountain bike or a jogger or somebody. Mm-hmm. So it was, all, it, it, it became apparent that these were like signals that somebody's coming. And at one point, it was even somebody was coming from the direction up up by the highway. Somebody was going up the trail and the signals came a minute or two before they showed up. So, I mean, I can see how when somebody's coming out of the woods and they know, but how do they know when somebody's going to the woods? Right. So that surprised me. Yeah. So uh, then there was one day I step out onto the porch and just got a glimpse, looked across the river and there's something black and boxy just kind of squiggled its way up out of the water and up the bank. So it's okay. I'm watching it. And I've seen otters over there before, but they, you know, oh. they come up mm-hmm. and they go back in and they play yeah. in the water. And mm-hmm. well, I'm watching and nothing ever comes back down. So I'm thinking, was this a little bear? What was this? I'm thinking, you know, it was a little bit smaller than Goldie. Goldie's about 60 mm-hmm. pounds. So I'm thinking this was maybe 50 pounds. And I'm thinking about the otters. Otters, you know, they they do this. And this was mm-hmm. Undulate. sideways. Mm-hmm. You know, it was more like yeah. an alligator squiggle. And oh, and wow. it didn't have a tail. So I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a little bear cub or something. Do bears squiggle? So mm-hmm. I asked in our local Facebook group, you know, on the other side of the river, you know, has anybody seen any bears up there? I just saw something come out of the river and go that way. Thinking, you know, if there was like a little baby, a, a cub had fallen into the river and maybe mom mm-hmm. is going to be up there looking There'd be some sign of these bears, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody saw any bears up there, but I did have two neighbors report that their dogs were kind of freaking out over nothing. Oh. So then I, you know, just by process of elimination, going by the size and the shape and the way it moved, you know, I'm thinking that that was probably a little Sasquatch. Oh, how cute. So oh my gosh. Wow. let's see what else happened. There was, um, Well, I forget what all else there was going on here, but there was quite a bit. Oh, one morning I went out to take the dog for her pee and uh, there's a big stick stuck in the ground right there by the end of the trail. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're, they're just all kinds of little, little signs all over the place. Yeah. So then I, I kind of know that this is going to be an awesome camp out because all of this activity that's just been leading up to it is just kind of, the, the energy is high that I know they're here. They're wanting to interact. And, you know, I made a few changes in the way that we set up our group site up there. And uh, it was, it really paid off. Oh, you know, wow. we went, we, I set us up closer to the water where, you know, we couldn't hear as well because the water's really high, but we had a, a, a great view of the sky and the river bed and uh, cross. And it gave us a, a lot more area. I think where we could have them come in around us and play. So we went up on Monday and uh, there were three of us and uh, Heidi and Cindy and I, and we set up our potty tent, which is a big like dome tent. And um, it's got no floor in it. We dig, got the post hole digger, dig a deep hole, put the chair over it. We've got a table, you know, that's got a hand washing (laughs) station and towels and, you know, all the stuff's right there. It's very nice. 
-hmm. and we get the tent set up and you pick it up and between the three of us we set it over the chair and the hole and it's all perfect right Mm -hmm. so 20 minutes later i'm at my tent and i look over toward the potty tent and it doesn't look right so i go up there and look and the entire back side all the clips had been taken off of the the poles so the whole back side of it was just hanging slack and 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 it takes some effort to get these clips off they don't just like fall off oh my gosh so so then that we had set up in the group area we got this little garbage can you know that's it's collapsible and we just line it with a hefty bag and i go over there and look and there's this branch about so long that's very flexible that has been put inside the top of the can that's literally holding the plastic bag up Oh and I, I'm looking at Cindy like, well, this is really cool. What a great idea. And she's like, I didn't do that. <laughs> that, that just kind of appeared there by itself. So I was like, okay, wow. well, that's really handy. You know, because they see us pick up all the trash. So I suppose they want to be helpful, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So then uh, Heidi and I both left to go pick up another uh, carload of stuff. And we left Cindy there watching camp. And while we were gone, she was keeping a uh, sitting by the fire and keeping a very close eye on the potty tent and uh so she noticed that there was something up on the hillside just beyond it that looked like a sasquatch up there so she's kind of watching that and then she's looking back to the potty tent to see what's going on and in between staring at whatever that was on the hill and looking back and then look back at the figure on the hill the figure had disappeared and had just basically become a flat stump which she was debating in her mind. Am I looking at a Sasquatch or is this like Mm -hmm. a snag, a stump that looks like a Sasquatch? But Mm -hmm. so that, that was the first sighting in camp. And that was on the day we were setting up. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, they were there ready and waiting to play with us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So on um, Wednesday, I got to have two sightings myself, three if you count a black blur that was moving too fast to identify. Wow. So we had gone, we were getting ready to go drumming. It was evening and it was dusk and I was walking from the group area to my tent. And um, I kept smelling berries, like this really intense berry smell. And it's like, I'm looking around, there's not even any berry blossoms, you know, there's Mm -hmm. no reason for this smell to be here. It was Mm -hmm. like walking through a jar of preserves. So I go to my tent, I walk through it, I come back from my tent, I walk through it again. And then I get back and I realize that what I had gone to the tent for, I didn't even grab. I came back with something completely different. <laughs> so then I had to go back to my tent again and I walked through the smell again and then came back and walked through it again. So that's four times I've walked through it now. Yeah. So I can see Debbie and Terry are getting up and they're kind of walking toward me. And I called them over. It's like, come over and smell this. Well, they got to smell it too. Very intense. But at that point it was like turning on and off. It would mm. be like, you'd walk into it, you'd walk out of it. And it, and then it just wasn't there anymore. So wow. I'm glad they got to experience it too, because it, after that it was just gone. Yeah. So that's wow. when we went for our little drumming session. Um, one of the guys had just had a, a an experience with whistles kind of up on the hill by his camper as he was coming out. So I gave him a flashlight and he was going to lead Tracy and I in the drumming. And I told him, you know, we're going to follow you. You just take us where your heart desires. So he takes us up the road up onto the hill. And as we're going up there, we picked up a few other campers who were following along with us. And one was in front next to the guy with the flashlight. And then Tracy and I were drumming. And then there were people behind us. So we get to the top of the hill and I turn around and there's like one guy behind us. And it we're all just kind of like dumbfounded. We thought there was a group behind us. So where'd all the rest of the people go? Okay, well, that's just a weird little anomaly. Very Mm -hmm. strange. So we we go back down to the main group site. And as we walk in it, walking into the road that takes us to it, I told Tracy, well, I'm just going to veer off here and go put my drum away in my tent, which was just, you know, 50 feet away. And uh, so I did, I went and I set my drum on my tent in my cot on my, excuse me, on my cot in my tent with the the beater. And I said, Hey, this is here. You want to play with it? Go ahead. And then I just walked right back out to the main road and continued to the group Mm -hmm. area. So I get out to the end of my little driveway that goes to my tent and uh, approximately 30 feet right in front of me, there's a Sasquatch standing there right on the edge of the road, tall, skinny, I'm say about seven feet tall. And wow. he's between the trees. He's perfectly backlit from the fire and all the lights at the group area. 
Oh my god! And gosh. he just kind of turns and he takes like two steps behind the uh, this the SUV that was parked there, and he just disappears into the darkness on the left side of the road. Mm-hmm. And wow! In, in my head, I've got like all these thoughts just like instantly the happen, and it's like first it's like, well, it's the people I just came down with. No, well, why don't they? Why doesn't he have a light? Well, wait, they're over there. Holy cow, he's tall! Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> not them. That's a Sasquatch. <laughs> And this wow. is like all goes through my head in one, yeah. just the blink of an eye. And, you know, looking back at it now, it was, it was backlit and it was very dark. So I couldn't really see any detail, but what I could mm-hmm. see, he was like all legs. And oh. you, you remember that the old John Cleese, uh, uh, thing, the, the funny walk, you know, where he's got the legs going. It kind of reminded mm-hmm. me of that a little bit, you know, where he's just all legs. Yeah. All legs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So I'm, I'm really stoked now. I go over to the group area and I'm like, I just had a sighting. He's right here. He's right here. I just had a sighting. And everybody's at the fire is going, oh, my God, you've got to see this stick. And I'm like, <laughs> what stick? I just had a sighting. And they're like, you got to see the stick. I just had a sighting. So it turns out that right where at the back of the vehicle where I had just had my sighting, the people who had just come back ahead of me had found this little branch that was up underneath the back of Heidi's. SUV balanced by just this one little tip up against the undercarriage. So it's just this beautifully displayed little branch, just wow. perfectly balanced three feet from where the Sasquatch was 30 seconds later. Oh my gosh. So they're all excited about the stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, there's a Sasquatch. That's what we're here for. <laughs> So and, and while we're all over there looking at the stick, I can still hear the Sasquatch. He's breaking sticks. He's right here just off the road in the darkness. So now I'm thinking, well, Derry, Terry and Debbie, they're up on the hill at the camp just above this area. I got to go tell them what happened. So, you know, so I go up there and here they're sitting in the dark in their chairs facing uphill. So I get in front of them and I'm talking to them, which puts me facing downhill toward the area where all this stuff had just happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling them, you know, you guys need to turn around, but they're just yeah. like, no, we're comfortable, <laughs> you know. So I'm standing there talking to them and I'm telling them about all this stuff that happened. And like, I don't know, maybe 30 feet behind them, that's when the first black blur goes through. And it's maybe four feet off the ground. And oh. as it crossed the light from my tent that was just over the edge, it, it dimmed the light as it went by. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this just ran through just right behind you guys. You got to turn around. And oh. I'm like, you know, we're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm still standing there facing that way, talking to him. And I see this, like, black figure pops up over the edge. And he's blocking out the light from my tent, which is just beyond him. So he pops up, and he goes that way. And I'm thinking, okay, this is the same one that I had just seen a few minutes earlier down below mm-hmm. behind Heidi's SUV and so I'm, I'm to me I'm thinking this is this part of the same sighting right yeah but later on we discussed this and decided no this gets to be two separate sightings so a well and three if you count the blur well three yeah with a little blur yeah <laughs> okay so then wow. so at this point I you know oh and, and while this is happening there's also a couple of like grapefruit sized flashes of light that are just kind of like in the trees right off to the side over here and finally, I convinced them to turn around and look the other way. <laughs> and by this time, I'm getting tired because, you know, I've just been on this drumming hike and, and you know, all this excitement. And I'm going back yeah. down to the group site. And I'm going to sit down and rest for a few minutes. So I get down there and I'm not even there 10 minutes. And I hear Terry on the radio. We just had a black blur go by and block out the lights again. Oh, my <laughs> so God. That was the second black blur part of that experience. Wow. So, Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So, so was that was the beautiful? That you. Yeah. That shows yeah. these sticks that we found the next morning that were right there by my tent. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what that video is that I sent you. Okay. All yeah. right. So if you want to play watch, that. Yeah, let's watch that. Um, yeah, Sonia yeah, will definitely fit in with you, Barb. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, there here we is. go. <clears throat> okay, so we there's my tent the bank between the upper area and my tent looking for signs of the action from last night and there's some marks on the ground that look relatively fresh right here but we can't say what made them but then we noticed we have 
sticks stuck in the ground right here and uh, a bigger one. Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I think some of these are elk because there were a lot of elk tracks right here when I got here, but uh, these look a lot fresher right there. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> that's something. Yeah. That is, that's cool. So yeah, so sticks like that started popping up around camp and there was actually a fourth one that was there that I thought was a stump that had been split at the top and had a stick through it like this, kind of aiming at the hill at one direction and oh. back toward the group area behind it. Yeah. And I had done tours going through and telling the story and showing those sticks of two people at a time just so everything wouldn't get trampled. And I think it was between tour three and four that we discovered that it wasn't actually a split stump that that also popped out of the ground. It was just a stick with a fork with another stick through it, like a oh, pointer wow. that was oh, right there wow. with those. Yeah. So. Wow. Cool. <laughs> and, and what so that and that just shows the connection because here we've been getting these sticks at the cabin, and my mm -hmm. friend in Portland is getting sticks, and there are just things happening everywhere. They're so similar, connecting everybody. And then you get to this camp out and they're showing the same thing. They give us the sticks. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Stuck in the and it's cool. beautiful. <laughs> I'm beautiful. <laughs> she would be looking at the sticks going, look how beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So Barb knows how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you where when you said the uh, what what happened to the group that you said you were walking up and you know and and drumming and then you looked back and nobody was where were they was it because of the stick you know I <laughs> don't know I think there was one guy that followed us and he swears he's the only one that came it's just that mm. you know we everybody that was facing the uphill we were drumming and walking uphill we all just had this mm -hmm. sense that there were more people that were with us oh. you know. Um, and here it just turned out to be one guy that was following behind wow. and we were drumming. Wow. So that was, it so was just a was very some, odd sensation. Do you think that some, like some Sasquatch were, you know, kind of. There could have been, you know, some kind of That's something true. in a spirit form or cloak yeah. form or, or something. Uh -huh. And, you know, right. also when we got up there where we stopped, we were under a rock face and we stopped and visited for a little bit there before we came back down. And there were a lot of rocks and, and pebbles and things that were coming down off of that rock face. And uh, oh, cool. the one guy that followed us up there actually got hit in the arm a couple of times with a pebble oh. that was coming down. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, so now explain to it. Um, can you explain to us? Because I mean, I know, but for the viewers, um, like with the drumming, what, what, how does that work, and why do you do it, and you know, what kind of a drum are you? Kind of, you just explain that, please. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think it makes any difference what kind of drum it is, as long as you know it's something that um, you can play with, and and you don't even have to, you know, like be an actual uh, uh, musician. You know, a drum is something that you can, you know, beat to the your own heartbeat, you know, and that's one of the things I'll do is I'll hold the drum up to my chest and I'll just beat out my intentions and thoughts and prayers and, um, you know, just try to spread out through the beat of the drum my, my I guess, intentions and, and uh, emotions but through the forest is just a way to connect with nature, you know, and uh, they seem to like it, you know, it, it, they want to come in. We've had camp outs before when, you know, with limited uh, instruments where everybody just kind of beats on whatever you got or uses whatever <laughs> you brought. Uh, one fellow had, uh, I think it was just a stick and he was whacking on the chopping block in tune to the rest of the group. And I was watching him and his arm would come up and then go down and there'd be bang and then bang. And then I noticed it was bang, 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 oh. bang, bang. And I said something. And as soon as he stopped, of course, that extra beat stopped too. But wow. you could tell that yeah. somebody else was had joined in, mm -hmm. you know, and oh, was keeping cool. time with us, even though, you know, it was in between the beats that we were making. So, yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, I, making music makes us shine and it makes us happy. And I think they like to see that. And they, they love the energy that we put off when we're 
making music and just, you know, enjoying ourselves and each yeah. other and nature. And uh, yeah. It's That's beautiful. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yes, probably going to say that a few more times. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so. seeing if there's any. Uh, do you have any? I don't see any questions. Everybody's just, you know, saying, yeah, like, wow, it's so interesting. And yeah, it is. It's amazing. Um, yeah, but you ever use a Tibet bow? Say what? You what? ever use a Tibet bow? You know, the woo. Oh, oh the singing bowl. Oh, yes. I actually have a really good story about one of those. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Tell us. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so this was probably at least five years ago it, at the same camp that we go to. Um, we were camped at the upper area away from the river and half of the group had gone for a night walk. And I was one of the few that stayed back at camp and I had it one of the Tibetan singing bowls mm -hmm. and I would had mm -hmm. been using it and I'd put it in the side pocket of my camp chair. So we're sitting there by the fire and I can see the trees on the other side of the fire and my car is parked just beyond those trees and I can see this black shadow coming by and it blocks out the light reflecting off my car. So I'm thinking maybe somebody's back from the, the walk headed for the potty tent except nobody comes out on the other side of the tree. So I, I kind of stood up and I'm I'm looking and I said, hello, and nobody answered me. And a couple of the other people sitting there with me, they got up and we all looked and there's nobody there. So I sit back down in my camp chair and my camp chair vibrates like and it, it vibrates on the side where the bowl is. So I don't know oh. if the bowl specifically was vibrated and then vibrated the camp chair, but my backside got vibrated enough Whoa. to make me launch back out of that chair and damn near into the fire. <laughs> It's wow. so good that um oh my god no harm was done it was just a good startle <laughs> wow that's cool yeah. wow. <clears throat> so just little games they like to play yeah 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 <laughs> um let's see what else um oh you know what somebody had not on here but i was talking to somebody about the cloaking um video because they had seen it and um they were wondering, is is this something that, do you think it's something that all Bigfoot can do? You know, I I can only speculate on that, but um, mm. I suspect it's something that, you know, they teach their young how to, how to do, mm. you know, mm -hmm. that uh, when they're coming around camp, like uh, when we're up there, that we're, they're guinea pigs, you know, somebody to uh -huh. practice on, you know. We are a there safe we go, ladies and gentlemen. Practice on. With. <laughs> there, there, there we go. Nitroglycerin <laughs> pills. We need the little paddles to bring you back to life. Okay. We need the flare guns. We need the satellite phones. Yes, I can see us now. God, have mercy. So, so then, little ones, they wouldn't be able to have that. Probably, well, you know, it's you a know, learned I, behavior. You think? I don't think it's something that they're born you know that's going to just automatically happen you know like a, an mm -hmm. instinct i think it's something they have to learn how to do okay. so you know the that's probably something they learn how to do at a very young age mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah but you know honestly i i yeah it's speculation. all just speculation yeah yeah the 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 bigfoot that you saw that had like the you know the the fur with like the legs and walking with the what do you do you think that was a juvenile oh yeah definitely okay how yeah. what age do you think it would have been about um you know once again just speculating but just going by the size of the bigger ones that i've seen you know when i was in the blues last summer i uh i had a sighting of one that measured at 15 feet so if that's wow. you know a big one <laughs> You know, seven yeah. feet is, you know, what, he's, what, five years old, six years old? Okay. You know, oh just a little guy. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So. Oh, did you see the question? Amy said, um, are you, are Sasquatch, no, I'm sorry, Sasquatch are more curious and gentle when there's women, laughter, music? I think so. Think? You know, that, that draws mm -hmm. them in, you know, they, they love to hear us laugh. They love the music. They, you know, when we make music, we glow and we shine and we put off this beautiful, beautiful energy. Mm -hmm. And I think they're attracted to that. You know, we're, we're not a threat. We're there to, you know, enjoy mm -hmm. nature and, and interact and, and, you know, have respectful interactions. You know, we're, mm -hmm. 
they enjoy our presence as much as we enjoy theirs. Yeah. Got to get rid of the fear, though. Got to get yeah. past that. Yeah. I'd be like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Just give now, us some time, you know. Yeah. I can remember yeah, back I, I, when I, I first doing this, I'd be so excited yeah. that the next day I'd feel like I was hung over, you know, just from the uh, adrenaline yeah. rush. Uh-huh. You know? I don't yeah. really get that anymore, but um, I still get pretty excited, but, uh-huh. you know, not so much that I, I feel like I'm hungover. Yeah. So yeah. Nowadays, Russell it mostly just know. makes me giggle. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Russell wants to know, do you hear any wood knocking when you're drumming? Um, not really. Um, I mean, we do hear wood knocks, but not a whole lot, and... Uh, We've had them join in with, you know, like I was talking, the one guy, yeah. you know, with the, the beat. Um, mm-hmm. We've had them mimic us um, with flutes and different sounds like that. Um, whistles. Um, not wood knocks, no. That's something mm-hmm. totally different. We've been in camp right beside trees that have w- will say something. And then it's like the tree mm-hmm. confirms it because the tree puts out a huge wood knock. And there's clearly nobody there but us. Oh, so, okay. You know, yeah. whether they're in the tree listening or there's somebody cloaked that just smacked it, you know, I don't know, but yeah. Okay. Um, Amy says Sasquatch tend to be very aggressive in Alaska. Is it due to the remoteness and less chance of watching people interact? You know, I, I could only speculate about that. I've never mm-hmm. been to Alaska. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I think it depends on the people that um, they're interacting with, you know, what yeah. you're t- are and um, mm-hmm. if you're respectful yeah. and if you if you go out into the woods looking and you're armed and you're looking to hunt something and you you could be dangerous well that that that's a whole different vibe you're putting off right you know yeah. we're not we're not going out looking for evidence or proof we just you know we we know that they're there and they know that we know that they're there and we just want to interact and we want to learn through respectful interactions. And that's what mm-hmm. we focus on. And that seems to be something that they respond to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, yep. it's like, you know, if you're going out there to be a threat, well, expect to be treated like a threat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I had said, um, you know, if you imagine if um, people walk into your house and, you know, they just walk in and. You're like, wait a minute, what are you doing? And they're and they're mimicking you, yelling, and and you know maybe they're armed. And um, let's take pictures of them. I mean, I'd be pissed, you know. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah, know, so. I think that they'll give us what what they want us to have. You know, so mm-hmm. if you you put a recorder out, this it and this is actually in our group rules. It, it, you know, if you want to have a recorder, go ahead, turn it on. Just tell them you're recording. You know, explain mm-hmm. to them, hey, mm-hmm. I have this recorder. I'm going to put mm-hmm. it over here, and this is the purpose of it. And if you want to be, you got anything you want to share with us, go ahead. And a lot of times we'll get, they will give us things on recordings or, or on video because they know what our purpose is. And if they don't want us to, they just turn it off. And if they yeah, turn it off, you, well, then we leave it off. Because, that's what you had told us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's just incredible. Yeah. And I heard um, somebody else that happened to this week. Um, oh, Cindy and um, uh, Bueno, good break. Um, she's in Idaho and she had the same thing. She kept trying to get some audio and they kept turning it off. And that's what yeah. she said. Well, you see, that's part of being rest. respectful. You know, you, yes. you go in there and you mm-hmm. explain your purpose. You yeah. know, you don't yeah. be sneaky. Don't try to hide it. Uh-huh. Put it out in the oh, open. Say, this is what okay. I'm doing. And then yeah. they'll give you, if they have something they want you to have, they will let you have it. But if, okay. if they don't, they'll just turn it off and then, you know, respectfully oh. leave it off. Yeah. Yeah. I got one. Um. And I got a yeah, recorder recently and um, I, somebody had su- suggested like hiding it in a windsock. So I got a windsock and I have it out there, but you're saying, no, I should just. No, tell you don't want to be sneaky because then they're not well, going to yeah, trust true. you. You know, if you're trying to yeah. hide things from them, that's not, not very uh-huh. respectful. And it, and oh. they know when you're being sneaky anyway. So yeah. You know, yeah. And that's not trustworthy. Open. Okay. You know, I, did yeah. I tell you about the time that I, I tried to be, you know, kind of sneaky with the recorder by thinking it's my yard not the woods okay. so they were vocalizing and i put a recorder in an inconspicuous spot that couldn't be seen mm-hmm. from the road in my yard and i left for a few hours and i came back and it was gone and i found it several feet away on the ground covered in dried mud and turned off <laughs> so you know that's what they thought about that yeah 
you know so if, if you go out there and and you're respectful there are things they'll give you you know like the cloaker video i'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. that was intentional that was something that was meant to be caught on camera yes. yeah like everything that i've ever had on camera was well i think of them as gifts you know things that they wanted us to have things that are intended to be shared mm -hmm. and uh if there's a situation going on that they don't want recorded, they are perfectly capable of turning off your gear or making your camera glitch or killing your batteries or, you know, mm -hmm. they can do it. Yeah. So, yeah, just be respectful. Say please. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Yeah, that's what I'll, yeah. I'll have to. That's what I'm going to do. That. Yeah, it's much easier than hiding it in a windsock anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, i got to yeah, figure out know, what a windsock is. you got to get past is, that whole we're smarter than them thing because it's not going to yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, Grizzly, you know, I, I found that, that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a windsock is one of those things that you just like hang outside and then it has like a, it has like a, I don't know, like a thing. And then there's like streamers that, mm -hmm. that, um, that, that, oh, that, yeah, you I know what I'm you. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. with the fairies dance with. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back there, everybody, to another edition of Open Door with Grizzly and Barb and Barb Hartman. And uh, wonderful. Uh, yes, Barb and Barb. So uh, this edition is brought to you by Western Kentucky Bigfoot Paranormal Investigations, LLC. Thank you, Don. Greatly Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Don. Thank you. So definitely. Amy says it's a dream catcher. But when she said the swirly things, uh, I kind of got an idea. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Um and let me see. Oh, Amy had also asked, do they follow you home in a paranormal way, moving objects within your home? Have you ever experienced that? Um, they move things around outside, and I have reason to believe that things happen inside, too. But mm -hmm. uh, it could just be regular ghosts in here. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I know they've followed me home from up the trail here a few times, and I know they come and hang around outside, and, and uh, I've had interactions in my yard. Um, pretty sure they're probably the same ones that are at the campouts. So. Really? Oh, cause, so it's that close? Is that oh, how yeah. it's... I mean, yeah. I mean well, they have well, a space, you know. Right here in this valley, it's, uh, you know, as fast as they go and as easy as they move around, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. take them very long. And... The campouts are never more than, you know, five yeah. to 10 miles away from home anyway. So, oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right here in the same drainage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the little wow. streak that you saw, the little, um, that you saw, you, I mean, that was a little one, right? Is that what you think it was the, just running? The blur? Out? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And is that how they, they can move that quickly? I've heard. You know, I have seen the blur a, flute a few times. Wow. There, um, back when, um, before Gabby passed away. Uh, there was a few times that uh, one time I was at my gifting area and I had my basket. I had just filled it. And I was holding the camera up, filming what was in the basket when my camera died for no reason. And then I looked and this black blur comes up the this log, an old log that was there. It came up around the end of it. And, you know, instantly I'm thinking it's Gabby. But then the blur takes off and Gabby takes off after the blur. Oh, and then wow. Gabby comes running back, looking over her shoulder, all happy, like, well, where'd it go? We were supposed to, <laughs> supposed to chase me back. 
but it wasn't there anymore so yeah i'm kind of assuming that was a juvenile oh my gosh and that's there, there's been other times when you know like at dusk you know you'll see gabby in the bushes and you're like come on gabby come on let's go and then it, it takes off the other way and just a, a blur and then you realize gabby's over here well <laughs> so it wasn't her so I, oh, i've seen the black cool. blurs a few times you know wow. um, they're generally too fast to be able to make out what they are Okay. So I speculate that they are young Sasquatch, but I can't really say that for a fact. Mm -hmm. So it could be something yeah. else out there that's also very, very fast. But the yeah. weird thing about it is, you know, dogs run fast, but you can still tell they're a dog. Birds fly mm -hmm. fast, but you can still tell they're birds. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this yeah. is like the only kind of thing that I've ever seen that moves so fast you can't tell what it is. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Um, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, <laughs> Let's yeah see. because Sonya used to talk about the wampus cat. And she oh, said yeah. they were running around them so fast, don't think she was a part of the tail. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'd be like <laughs> you know, no, I'm good, I'm good. And then now, you know, her friends would be like, what is that? Stuff. They're like, oh, yeah. I might be it's beautiful, <laughs> it's okay, we're safe. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Uh, Russell wants to know, have you ever seen them eating anything? Um, no, I've never seen them eat. But um, when I used to gift, uh, there were three years that every week that I, I went out and I left um, everything, you know, snacks, toys, all whatever I thought they might like. And um, mm -hmm. I had taken a jar out of dried apricots and I think it was peanuts all mixed together in a glass jar with a screw on lid and they took the lid off and they ate all the peanuts and the the all the dried apricots were on the ground except there was one that you could see where they had taken a bite out of it and just they didn't, didn't like, like it. it and then oh my god <laughs> and they just oh, yeah, they they like the these Do oh them. yes they love the flashing balls yeah yeah wow. that's what i heard I, i'm afraid to use those where i'm at because i don't want to <laughs> see these go through the woods like this or anything <laughs> or streaks honestly going they through don't the woods, need so. those so if you know you put one of those out there that's your that's your way out. If you're not ready to mentally accept orbs, <laughs> you can blame it on the ball. <laughs> oh, okay. No, okay. <laughs> I thought I was getting ready to order a thousand of these things, and she said that's my way out. I'm like, I'll be chucking them as I'm running. So yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you know, speaking of chucking balls, this last <laughs> camp out, uh, Debbie and Terry, who I told you were up on the upper area where they were camped. When mm -hmm. they got there, there was like this brand new tennis ball kind of in a hole, just oh, a shallow God. hole at the edge of their camp. And throughout the course of the camp out, Debbie had taken the ball and was just kind of playing with it around camp. And at one point, she just pitched it out into the woods and they brought it back and put it back in the hole. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did they Pretty just cool, discover huh? it in the hole? I mean, they didn't, you know. It didn't come like flying out back out of the no forest. no no she didn't see it come back they but just, it was it oh, was brought back cool. out of the woods and put back in the hole wow right there, that's really cool. originally oh my god yeah, and it still looked clean that that was what blew me <laughs> away it wasn't even dirty <laughs> wow <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, what do you think is is was behind the you know the uptick uh, uptick in activity when you had all this you know flurry of activity what do you think was behind you that? know I think they knew the camp yeah. out was coming that it was oh, wow. um they were anticipating it as much as we were. And I think that mm -hmm. the arrival of spring is a really big deal. You know, when it's the, everything warms up and the, everything becomes green again, the leaves open and that it's just mm -hmm. that one week here. It personally is my favorite week of the year because, you know, I can just look out the window and watch the maple leaves go from just little buds to open yeah. leaves and just watch it happen and you know the flowers mm -hmm. bloom and the bugs come out and the birds sing and you mm -hmm. know spring is a beautiful thing and yes. then not only that but then you have the the power of the snow melt coming down the rivers and that's oh. a lot of friction and energy in the water with all the rocks and and the grit from the the uh, glaciers and everything melting mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it just creates a lot of new life and energy. And, and I think they celebrate it as much as we do. 
Oh, wow. That's great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody had asked on my Facebook page, um, why do you think that they, that people see them swaying back and forth? Um, it's just the way yeah. they are, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought maybe I said, they're made. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they're trying to almost like, um, I think we were talking about it last night, weren't we, Grizzly, about kind yeah. of just trying to disguise themselves, you know, a little bit, you know, maybe um, like they're if they're with the breeze. around. Yeah, I don't know, you know, just to, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, I don't know, yeah, maybe trying to get a better <laughs> view. Maybe it looks better from this eye. <laughs> no, it's to scare the hell out of Grizzlies, what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Let's see. Does anybody have any 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 I don't see any questions? Um no, nah, they're just enjoying the conversation right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're just so amazed. Yeah. Wow, it is. It's just amazing. Oh my gosh. Um so what else? Anything else that you can that's you know? Oh, uh, we we found a big about? butt print on the first oh. Tuesday of oh. the camp out. I was going through and picking up um picking up trash and uh there was a spot that was kind of down river uh, at the edge of our camp area and when mm -hmm. i first saw it i was thinking maybe somebody else had been through and found like a tarp or a hefty bag or something and had picked it up mm -hmm. and once i went around and checked and you know nobody else had been down there and you know we took a good look and it really was a big old butt print and wow. pretty sure it was a boy and uh <laughs> I'm not really sure how I'm going to present this. It may just be something we talk about without any visuals. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> there we go in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it up to your imagination or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> wow. I have several, several video takes of it and i'm not sure any of them are fit for public use so we'll just see how it's gonna go no, <laughs> well, <Lord. laughs> well you know it is interesting because i found a butt print and i could tell that it was a female and you know oh, what yeah. i mean yeah so yeah sandy Definitely has a cast a of one of those and, and yeah. i really yeah. think it needs some underwear you know yeah. <laughs> Amy says message received. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amy asks, right. what, uh, what state do you live in? I know. So if you want to tell Amy where you're. Well, oh, I, I'm in uh, Washington State, just north of yeah. Mount Rainier National Park in the Cascade yeah. Mountains. Yeah. My neighbor, not neighbor, but state neighbor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so let's see. I don't know. What do you. You know, um, I think did I set did I send you the video? I think I may have Barb that I got on my um on my home camera one morning. It was um five o'clock in the morning, and I swear that I see like little juveniles just like sitting there. Did I send that to you? You know, I, I think you did send me a video. Okay. Yeah. So um it looked like some of them could potent possibly be cloaking, but others weren't so that makes me think like you had said maybe they teach their you know they teach their young so maybe they're just in in various stages yeah you know i okay. think you know like like us some are probably more talented than others but, okay you know, some probably mm -hmm. get it pretty easy and some struggle mm -hmm. you know they're individuals yeah and if it's something they have to learn you know it's uh, not everybody learns at the same pace right right and yeah uh, you know what better what better way to practice these things than, you know, like with your siblings or your cousins or whoever mm -hmm. else is little to play these games yeah. with, you know, you make it fun, then it's easier to learn. So, right. Right. And, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure you live in a situation where you're probably pretty fun to play with too. <laughs> yeah. They know I'm, they know I'm watching them. I think so. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I, and I, you know, so do you think that um, like, you know, like um, maybe just like deer will put their, their babies, set them someplace and, you know, and go on and hunt and whatever. I'm wondering if that's what they do when they just put the babies here overnight um, in that spot. Well, you know, knowing you that... got to think of it as a place that's going to be safe because predators yeah. like cougars and, and bears aren't necessarily going to come in and be a real threat when they're that close to humans. Uh -huh. And if they've mm -hmm. observed you long enough that they know that you are not a threat, 
Yeah. You know, it's not, you're not going to hear a sound and just come out shooting. Right, you know, right, you, right. Yeah. yeah they're they're going to be. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're not <laughs> at your house, Grizzly. <laughs> they are. They're they're probably out back and they're like, here he comes. <laughs> get him. They're not Let's leaving their him. babies out there. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, probably, yeah, no. No, but I've had, um, yeah, because I've had, uh, you know, Doe will come and, you know, drop the babies, the fawns off, um, you know, just here for the day. And I'm like, oh, it's, that's cool. <laughs> Grandma's babies. So maybe, yeah. So I like to think that that's maybe what they're doing. That's cool. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them like since though, but, but that was just what last Monday. So I guess I still, you know, there's still hope that they'll be back. <laughs> yeah. See, and you appreciate those things. And yes, you know, having that kind of an appreciation, you know, I don't know whether it's, you know, they, they sense your mother instincts or, or mm -hmm. just because you're female or just because you appreciate these things, but they, they understand that. And, and I think when you have an appreciation for those things, they give you more of it. That's cool exciting remember to say thank you <laughs> yes yes i de yeah definitely now to say? tell somebody with no experience at all what are these creatures how would you describe them to somebody i think they're just they're a different kind of people you know they they live in the forest and they don't need the things that we do you know they don't have to have the shelter or the vehicles or the job or the clothes or the cell phone they don't need any of these things they're they so perfectly live in tune with nature mm -hmm. you know they're just a part of nature they have what we lost you know thousands and thousands of years ago you know they they don't need any of the things we do and they just get along fine being a part of nature and they're just a different kind of people you know Wow, that's yeah, that's really cool to think. Wow. <laughs> um, did you say I I know that you um I kind of know the story, but could you just explain like um your is it your dad and is it your stepmother that they have <clears throat> a really close relationship with a clan? Uh yeah, when I don't know about so much now. Um yeah, you know, I think in once you're on the radar, you're always on the radar. But if, okay. if you're not reaching out and interacting with them, not that they're gonna forget you, just that you're not going to be high on the list of, mm -hmm. of, of people they're going to be reaching out to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when, when they were here, my dad and his wife moved up here from Texas. I guess it's been about six, seven years ago. And they stayed uh, one summer here at my cabin. And while they mm -hmm. were here, they really liked my dad. Oh. And uh, they would, like the bridge out here with the, from the creek, they uh, were out there one night with a big stick beating on the underside of the bridge. And then they left that stick as almost like a, a handrail where my dad was going down in and out of the water there. He had slipped one time and almost got hurt. You know, he's not a young man, but right after that, they beat on the underside of the bridge and then left this big, probably 10 foot long branch about that big, big around just right oh there. God. So it, basically worked like a handrail for him to That's go out of the creek after that. Cool. Wow. And, uh, they'd go out and leave gifts for him. <laughs> One time my dad had a gifting area up here, just not far from where mine was. And uh, they had forgotten to take the camera. And uh, he said that he stayed at the gifting area when Juanita came back to get the camera out of the RV. And then he, after she had walked away a couple of minutes later, he realized that they had locked the RV when they walked out to the woods and he had the keys in, in his pocket. So to call her back, hoping she was going to be close enough to hear, he'd hollered out, you know, Juanita. Mm -hmm. And then from the other side of the creek, somebody else hollered out, Juanita. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wasn't him, but they were doing their best to mimic him. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like um, Amy said about, which I think she's talking about, um, she had an experience at Suwannee a month ago. Um, and that, yeah, they made these owl sounds at night and they started arguing. Yeah, they do make <laughs> owl sounds. They love to make the owl sounds. Yeah, they do. I've heard <laughs> owls that growl. Um, we have owls that leave really big footprints. Yeah. Um, we have <laughs> owls that are kind of lazy. They don't really give it much effort. 
You know, I can remember <laughs> out here what when all this first started for me and, and before I even realized what was going on, I got off work one night and I just came in and I grabbed something, went out and uh, I could hear right across the road. There was hoo, 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 uh-huh. hoo, Ho, 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 ho. So it's like, you know, that guy's just That's, not even trying. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and I can remember before I even realized the Bigfoots were out here, you know, I was out looking for a missing cat one night and I was about 100 feet up the trail and I heard behind me in the creek, you know, the hoo, 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 hoo. Oh. <laughs> My blood ran cold that time because I know that yeah. birds can't growl. <laughs> I right, can't remember right. Thinking to myself, is that something a Sasquatch might do? But <laughs> nah, we don't have any of those around here. It's a small town. If we had Sasquatch around here, everybody'd know about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> time will tell. <laughs> wow, and it is, and it's funny, yeah, because that's the same the same owl sounds at all here. But you know, but like you said, it's it's clear that it's not an owl, and you can tell when that is, but when it's yeah. not, and it's that like mimicking or the or the cadence just isn't you know yep. I, and um, but you know i think they're perfectly capable of doing a perfect owl call if they want to mm-hmm. you know they they i think they can perfectly mimic anything they want if they yeah. you know if they're good yeah. at it they practice and uh you know i've heard stories of them mimicking even you know weed whackers and and lawn mowers and wow. you know, I, th- I think pretty much anything they want to mimic they can they can mm-hmm. do it it's a talent mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about frogs? Because I feel I've like... heard a mimic a frog out here yeah, in the I middle like of winter I... when everything's frozen solid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was a rooster followed by a frog, and there weren't any, oh. any chickens in the woods either. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've I've heard that, um, and it and it's just not you know like a, it's just a not. It sounds just like a frog, but it doesn't. Again, the cadence yeah. is not there. And um, anyway, so yeah. Well, that's amazing. Wouldn't you love to? Yeah, she could like see that, you know, see them make how they make these noises. Well, I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Give me a little more time. Yep, yep, yep. I'm sure you'll (laughs) rooster frogs. Yep, (laughs) that's what it is. And not just rooster frogs, but like January rooster frogs. Yes, (laughs) when everything's frozen solid. (laughs) Right, right. Uh, yeah and then yeah amy said yeah al's arguing <laughs> yeah <Yep. Yep. laughs> oh that's uh. funny <laughs> so um do you think that it's uh you know that it changes with the seasons where you're at as far as the activity or do you think they're there all year round uh, i think they're here year round mm-hmm. you know i i think they come and go doing their their thing you know there's it's a big valley and i think they they move up and down and and uh, to different areas, maybe uh, uh, come down closer to the rivers in the winter and, and uh, go up a little higher in the summer. But, you know, I don't think there's ever been more than more than a month or six weeks at any given time that I haven't had some kind of an activity here or something that shows they're still around. Wow. So, you know, I can't speak for other places. You know, there's mm-hmm. probably, you know, other places where they migrate or, you know, they just, you know, will come into an area for a while and then leave. But just speaking from my personal experience here, they they live here year round. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many generations have, have grown up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that old lady who's been here forever. You know? <laughs> I came here when I was young and, you know, they, um, we, they're grandmas yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know Robin Haynes McRae? Have you heard of her? Uh, not um, personally, but I, I know of her. She yeah. um had kind of, she kind of does like, she's able to read energy and, and communicate with them that, you know, not, um, and, I had asked her if she could see, you know, read what was going on with me. And she said um, that there were um, two clans. There's a clan living on my property that has about 19 members. And then there's a clan, another clan close by that they kind of interact with each other with 26 members. But she said that um, they were both um, had two matriarchs in power. 
you know, old females that were very powerful. And she said the one was like well over a hundred years old. Oh, wow. And I'm like, wow, that's, I mean, you know, that's whew, cool to think about. Cause that's, I've, I've wondered, you know, how old, how old they, well, are. you know, they've, they've got healing abilities that they can help us, you know, with the little things, mm -hmm. our aches and pains. And I would imagine that they can, they can doctor themselves pretty well too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they live a, a, a healthy diet, you know, they don't eat any junk food. They don't smoke mm -hmm. and they don't drink. And, mm -hmm. you know, so aside from, you know, whatever, uh, uh, hazards of living in the wilderness would bring, you know, they mm -hmm. probably are pretty tough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, can you see, have they always been in your life? Um, Amy um you said. know, I've had an interest since I was a very small child and I had very strange things happening in my life when I was young. Um, so I, I suspect that I've been on their radar for a lot mm. longer than uh, they've been on mine. Okay. You know, I think that there's probably been some some level of communication that I just wasn't aware of that was them until, you know, probably these last 10 years. But, you know, looking back, I can think of so many things that, you know, now the pieces fit together that I just didn't I didn't understand back then. And, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of it was in preparation for the life that I have now, you know, so that I can have the understanding and the the uh, hindsight to deal with the things that are happening and uh, you know, cause they're, you look back on things and there's like different layers of information that are in hidden inside of every experience and you know, things that are on the surface level when they first happen, you don't really see beyond that until time goes by and you learn more and you can look back and go, Oh, now I see now, it, now things make sense. Yeah. You know, so I think in some way that I've, I've had a connection to them for a lot longer than I was aware of. Mm. Yeah, that's great. So what do you have coming up um, in the future? Any, um, any other camp outs planned or? Oh yeah. We've yeah. got uh, one more camp out coming up here in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm really excited about that. And uh, we're going back to the place where I got the giant fingerprint last October. Okay. And then um, uh, in July we're, going to the Blue Mountains over in uh, Northeast Oregon and Southeast Washington for a couple oh, nice. or eight days. And uh, that's my favorite place in the whole planet outside of Greenwater. Really? So I have high hopes for over there. And then... Uh, Why is it your favorite place? Is it very active? What's well, it's, it's, well, it's incredibly active and they're very friendly over there. And uh, it, but just the, the land, the scenery, the the dramatic landscapes, the wildflowers, the sunsets. Oh. It's just a very magical place. Wow. It's really cool. The, the one place we're going to even has a medicine wheel that uh, oh. has been in use. They don't even know how, how old it is, but it's still in use. Oh, wow. So just a lot of good energy. Wow. And, and where is that? things happen. That's uh, um, in the uh, Umatilla National Forest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Samantha is asking, what does their clan structure look like? Meaning one alpha male, a group of females and younger ones, or several couples and kids? I couldn't tell yeah. you. <laughs> I know that there is a mama out here and mm -hmm. there's a lot of babies, which uh, makes me think there's probably a dad around and, mm -hmm. and um, I suspect some big brothers. But uh, other than that, I, I couldn't say. I would just be speculating and yes. I don't really yeah. have anything to base it on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, um, yeah. A couple of people have said, um, Kenny Busby, who's the other, per there's somebody else that i um, trying to think of. We were just talking about them last night, Grizzly, that have ongoing, you know, like habituation and, and, and they really interact. Um, Jennifer, I know is another one. And Sonia did, I don't know if she, but anyway, thought more that they were, it was structure of like monogamous, you know, what they mate for life. Um, you know, Mike once they do. And, yeah. 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 So more of like that kind of a, you know, of a, of a structure like that. Very well could be. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I believe that now, the youngsters mistake, look after Barb, the other youngsters. Was reading a, I made a mistake, oh. Barb, reading the thing about how they mate. 
and uh, <laughs> how the female did something to the male. And I wasn't paying it. I was just reading it, and I was like, whoa, okay. So <laughs> I'll let that to your imagination as well. <laughs> So that was very <laughs> yes, yes. That was very you know, embarrassing. Some things that probably just don't need to be documented. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, or even said to the to the audience that I just broadcasted <laughs> this morning, because you know their cars were in the ditch this morning on the way to work. <laughs> so yes, that was uh, very yeah. embarrassing because you know, I, I always like to give people facts, right? Mm -hmm. So when people ask questions, I compare it to silverbacks or gorillas or chimpanzees. Yeah. So I will Google it and I will throw it out there in the chat rooms <laughs> and I will read it. So the audio listeners the next days will know what's going on. Right. And when I was reading, I was like, whoa. <laughs> and everybody was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, how beautiful. <laughs> was like, so embarrassing. I was like, yeah, I am not doing that no more, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, that was, just, that was just about underwear. Poor crazy witch thought somebody was asking if he was wearing underwear. And he was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Here we go. So, yeah, he actually asked that earlier in, in the comments. I just let that one go. So, yes, that was fun. Yeah, have, not... have you ever heard of them wearing clothes? No, uh-uh. Okay. No. Because Crazy yeah. was talking about that last night about, um, yeah, about that he had heard that or somebody. We have reports that. in Michigan yeah. in Appalachian Trails that they still close off clotheslines and they are wearing clothes. Now they're not like well, wearing the best skinny cover jeans. Some really big people. So <laughs> yeah. well, I, mean, I mean, they're not they're not fitting them like you know like yeah yeah. Maybe they look like, like skinny grizzly jeans pants. On them. Yes, right. <laughs> but well, you, know, you know, the, I can see how you know they might want to you know a pretty strip of material you know to tie their hair back with or you know something you know is something that might be useful or, or that makes them happy. You know, if there's a, a yeah. bright colored print that they enjoy to look at, mm -hmm. they probably would take it and, and you know, <laughs> incorporate it into, you know, something that they would make use of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And attractive <laughs> mate too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Neither do I. I do not either because they cloak themselves and they and they just play with me in the woods. So yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, guess who just walk into how beautiful it is? It's a beautiful so, yeah, thing. So yes, Sonia just came uh, in. Yeah, so. see. There she is. Yeah. <laughs> Can be speak fashionable. Of, speak of the devil. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, there was, there was a, a, something I was listening to, or I, um, do you know, Barb, you probably, uh, Mary Green, she's passed away though, but she was a really great um, researcher in, out of Tennessee. Um, and she, and I can't remember who the woman was, but she was, she was, um, taking notes and had written a book about this woman that was basically raised with them. Um, and, and, um, and so um, one of the things that was really, was really cool. And I want to say that they called this one Sasquatch. I want to say that they called him Blackie, but I'm not positive because I know Blackie was one of the, was one of the, you know, uh, males in the, in the clan, but, but anyway, so let's say Blackie, he had stolen, um, um, a big the, white uh, t-shirt uh, yeah, off of there goes the youtube mom. channel yeah no no, no. He, he had <laughs> stolen um a big big t-shirt off of somebody's and they didn't know where he got it you know but off of somebody's clothesline like it was like you know a big man and so um and they were like oh you know it was so cute that he's he's walking around you know maybe he's, he's six feet tall you know walking around and, it, and it's kind of long but then <laughs> shortly thereafter and he didn't take it off but you know he's still wearing it and it's getting like smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> so until it got <laughs> yeah and they said that he had that he wore that thing just and it was you know then it was like dirty and 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 almost like turned into rags but he just kept it on he just loved that I guess he loved the look of that well, you <laughs> that know, it piece. might have been you know something that just made him happy you know like a security yeah. blanket or you know it had a good feel or a good smell or just yeah. something about it made him feel special and made him feel happy yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. He was be he was being fashionable, I guess, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So um all right. What do you think, Grizzly? Anything? No, I'm waiting anything? for Sonny to come in. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, yes. Uh, and uh, she knows so much about Barb, right? Because we talk about Barb yes. all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she has fascinating stories as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it kills me because, you know, you tell people that, and, and, and I reach up because I do a lot of paranormal investigations, too. And this is just a... a <laughs> what did that say? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I got I got haunted dolls above me, but I've got all different types of recorders, right? And I tell people that these things are that smart, they turn them off, not drain the batteries, but turn them off. Now yeah. I have one one guy that wants the show, and he was like, I want to put this to the test. So he took one of these. And he duct taped it while well, he used gorilla tape. Now, no pun intended, <laughs> and put it to a street sign next to where he sees eye shine. And for hours, they threw rocks at the sign trying to knock it off. And the only thing you heard was ding, ding, don't, 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 ding, 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 and, and they couldn't knock it off for hours. It's the only thing he got. <laughs> now They're go back to that. Yes. Smart. Well, God. you know, we had a camp out. One of our early ones. Uh, where the camper they had a brand new trailer that they just bought they brought it in they had never i mean this was like it's the first time they'd taken it out to the woods and right inside the the window the uh you go in the door and there's like the little table and, and benches there and the window mm -hmm. and overhead there was some shelves and a radio well they took mm -hmm. one of those recorders like that and they duct taped it to the wall right inside the window mm -hmm. and uh it was right across the road from the group area. She had some tiki torches that she put out, two in the front, one in the back. And the group sat there and watched across the road. As the back tiki, tiki torch went out within five minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, the one on the front on the uh, right lasted maybe 15 minutes. And then the, one, the last one that was on the front on the left by the door, it went out maybe... May, it lasted maybe a half an hour, and then it was all dark over there. And uh, not much time went by, and we started hearing music. And we're, it's very faint, but we can all clearly hear there's music, but we don't know where it's coming from. And then about that time, she needed to put her kids to bed. They had you know, fallen asleep there by the fire. So mm -hmm. she was carrying one of them, and one of the other campers picked up the, the little boy and carried him. They went across the road to put him to bed. And they got over there and discovered that the radio inside this camper, which had never even been turned on before, was blaring at full blast. Oh, and my the gosh. recorder had been ripped off the wall, the tape removed from it, and was wadded up into a big bunch on the table. The recorder was left turned off on the bench beside the table. Turned off, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my turned God. Off. Turned off. <laughs> turned off. And yep. the radio was on. And the radio was blaring so loud that that's the wow. music we were hearing across the road. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And then the one tiki torch relit. So <gasps> then people oh. want to know why I'm on medication and I'm not an alcoholic yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was pretty cool. So that was, somebody you know, asked like, about what, what that. Did they play with right, fire? Right so, right yes, really they are. must play with fire then. Because they well, asked you know, about I don't that. know if maybe there was still a spark in there or, mm. you know, they just gave it a little zap of energy, you know, a little bit of oh focused God, energy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it relit. <laughs> we all sat there and watched it. So now what you... I'm thinking happened is they came from behind because that was an area. It was in an area where we get a lot of activity. They come out of there. So they took out the one to the back then the one to the front. And then finally the other one went out and that's when they went in, did what they needed to do and then came back out and the Tiki torch relit. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's, I think I told you last time about some other campers who had taken a recorder and some apples and a pie up to the same area just a few days before the camp out. This was probably right in that same time frame, one of our earlier camp outs. And it's, it's the hillside right there is, practically vert vertical it's uh, oh. very steep mm -hmm. and they went up there they left the pie they left the apples and then they lifted up like six inches of moss and stuffed a recorder under there 
And when they came back three days later for the camp out, you know, the pie's gone, the apple's gone, and the recorder's gone. Wow. So uh, they took it and they found it uh, close to the end of the camp out. It had been brought down and left outside one of the one of the RVs and it was uh, turned off. Wow. So nothing was recorded. They, wow. Don't don't be sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'll give you what they want you to have if you're respectful. Well. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, now she spins fire and they love what, it. How, how do you do that? Great. Wait, wait, what do you mean? I, how do you what, do that I learned, fire? I have no idea. That's, uh, I'm, I'm, I got these awful pictures in my head right now, Sonia. <laughs> Is it like baton, you know, when you light the baton on fire? Is that, oh. how do you do that, Sonia? I don't know what she's, I don't know what she means. Spins fire. <laughs> See, I've learned something. Yeah, no, every, they're, they're not uh, afraid of it. Yeah. No, yeah. Now, if I ever come back on the show, my beard is gone and I'm black. <laughs> I got zapped, ladies and gentlemen. That's what happened <laughs> with energy. So, <laughs> so Sonia, what do you mean you spend fire? Yeah. So, <laughs> that's like yeah. those, uh, the, the fire eater, you know, that they got the thing yeah. that they spin around. Yeah. And they're yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. She's all kinds of talents. That Either woman she's here. laughing hysterical right now or she's <laughs> going to type. So you're looking at a vegetation and Sasquatch is walking around. Uh, I have a fire staff. What is a fire? What are you? I know. <laughs> now, what, what do you mean? You like a, like a wand? You know where you like. <laughs> it's one, one, of one of those things. Writers, that you click it and then the flame comes out over here. For lighting fires. That's a fire staff. We call those a, a, a big lighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. You're looking at vegetation. So, Sonny, you have to tell me a little bit more what is a fire staff. <laughs> I have a staff, oh, yeah, like a long stick. stick, and I have yeah. a peel, yeah, and it has balls of fire. <laughs> Why oh. everything has balls? <laughs> so we have no I've noticed that with them. You there should have seen what I Facebook. found under the lichen the other day. <laughs> now what'd you mind. find? Never mind. Yeah, she said when she said never mind, I was like, yeah, I better not ask. Can you I want to know? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> it, it was something to do with the butt print. I was trying to oh, figure okay. out where to measure things from and <laughs> every piece of lichen. And, Oh, <laughs> that's great. Let's just put that back. Oh, I'm dizzy. <laughs> oh, she knows, uh, I don't know what they are, but she just gave me some never mind. Uh, you all you need you all you all need to talk because you all are on the same wavelength about certain things. I'm not that. Yeah. Because we had a guy one night on the show, he was like, his junk was on my trunk. I mean, he was on the hood. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, he did not do that on my show. <laughs> He's like, it was right there in front of me. And I was like, yo, oh my Lord, this is oh, not oh happening. Yes. And, who was, and who was telling us about the guy that got his hand like sat on by the Sasquatch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he was in he was in a park. Oh. And he kept hearing something. His kid was laying next to him. And you know, you know how the, the parks have those some of those lights up in the trees. And he said he saw this big shadow. And he was laying next to the edge of the tent. And he said, he's, well, he said, well, he didn't know what it was. And it sat down and it sat on his hand. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, well, what was it? He said, it's a Bigfoot butt. <laughs> I'm like, what you did? He said, I squeezed it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he said, I was the first human being that ever squeezed a butt. <laughs> and I was like, man, this guy's punking me out. I know. And I was like, I was going to jab it with the knife, but I was afraid to. And I'm like, no, he's yeah. telling the truth. He's telling the truth. So, yes. But, man, he, he, he was very proud of that moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'll bet. Hey, you know, it's not everybody that gets to squeeze a Sasquatch butt. <laughs> yeah, no, I would have passed out right then and there. I would have been dead. Yeah. Poor Amy. 
Oh my God. Well, I'm sure in the right circumstances, it would be a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Sonia. How beautiful. <laughs> she would probably have been like. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, girl. I just for, had for to. The one we found, there was kind of a large rock in the middle of it. We were thinking maybe he was, you know, having oh. a little itch. You yeah. know, just. <laughs> <place to shoot. laughs> it took me a second to visualize. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can see oh the audio gosh. listeners tomorrow. Like, what in the hell is going on? <laughs> Oh my lord! <laughs> oh, crazy witch! I know. Yeah, this is crazy. Amy's oh, still dying. You what, we had one camper that took it for the team. There was one person that actually got down there and took a sniff, and she reported <laughs> yeah, nothing but the snow. No dirt, so. <laughs> no. You know what? I thought about that, and I thought I'm not gonna ask that. No, yeah. no, there are no, photographs, no. But I don't know that they'll ever get shared. <laughs> Yeah. No. We okay. have a guy uh, that used to feed these things peanut butter. And he got, uh, she's actually sending me pictures. Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, of the fire things before okay. I say anything else. Okay. <laughs> and I, I will show them. Okay. No, she is, she, she's doing fire. She, they they say fire. I'll show them. But anyways, he found some feces. Oh, and he yeah. said it was so big, he had to break it in half to get in his cooler. Oh. And it took and it stuck up his truck for three days. And guess where he put it? He's like, don't tell my wife. It's in the freezer. It's in the freezer. Yeah. Yes. I'm Are like, you? what in the world? And man, we thought we were going to die. We couldn't even breathe. <laughs> And is like, stop, stop. Yes. How oh, beautiful. Yeah. All right. So let me bring these pictures up. Okay. Sonia dancing with some fire fly. I can't even say it now. I'm laughing. <laughs> Anyways, let me, yeah, let me bring these up here. Let me bring up my Facebook. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, he was serious. It's in his freezer. I'm like, man, the government's going to come t- confiscate your freezer now. And, <laughs> everything well so. i i know some people that also kept some in the freezer and then they put it in a cooler to take it to a conference where it thawed <laughs> out and you know everybody had to open the cooler to get a look oh no and it was no! it was not good it was it was not a good Ew. thing <laughs> i did, I, I think imagine. they actually bought a separate freezer to keep it in though yeah, yeah. It, it I, went, I know it somebody did not want to throw it out yeah so. yeah yeah there yeah. was a lot was of it, freezing and thaw in there. Was it real bit? Was it bit? And it was huge, I assume. <laughs> um, I think it was more like a pile. Than... <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. No, this was this was he, he had to break it in half. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember which button I'm hitting now. Y'all got me. I can't even <laughs> think straight. Hold up, I'm hitting wrong buttons everywhere. <laughs> oh my lord. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I can't even think. Hold on. I don't know where I'm at. I can't believe it. I hope this guy's never going to watch this show and let's talk about him like that. I'm never coming back on his show. You have a lot of good material, though. Thank you. Oh, Hi, yeah. That, yeah, I tell you. See, uh, all right. Let me minimize this. There we go. Now we're Now we're cooking with some peanut butter. <laughs> uh, and we found out they like uh creamy and not crunchy so <laughs> yes peanut butter all right yeah. here we go all right let me hit this button present and uh share screen here we go it should pop did it not pop Mm-mm. and action <laughs> There we go. All right. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. So oh, she actually is playing. Oh my god! Oh. Yes. Whoa. Oh, that's whatever cool. that one thing. Whoa. Let me go. Yeah, but it's it, yeah, it's actually fire, ladies and gentlemen. So wow, that is really cool. 
Oh, there it is over on the right. Okay. Go sit. Go sit down. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually awesome. fire. Jeez. Wow. And they like that. I bet you they do. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. So, wow. Yeah. So, Barb, do you have anything planned for the weekend? Any camping? Um... I'm going to try and get some of my yard stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Um, yeah. Work on, I really, really want to get started on my garden, but I know that it's too early and anything mm -hmm. I really plant now, I'm going to have to replace again in about a month. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's so hard not to go out there and just start putting seeds in and flowers in. And mm -hmm. so I'm yeah. just going to, you know, do some trimming and weeding and uh, a yeah. lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> I've you told see. you about the slug thing before, didn't I? Oh, yeah. But tell, but uh, you told me, but tell, yeah, share that. Uh, so a couple, of, a couple <laughs> of summers ago, I was out here, you know, I had created this uh, habitat across the road where, <laughs> for slugs, which was basically a big compost pile where, where we were trimming trees and I put all the leaves over there. Uh -huh. And then I'd go out at night with a flashlight and a pan and gloves and I would collect all the slugs that I could find and I would mm -hmm. relocate them to this wonderful habitat where they didn't, weren't going to want to come back, right? Uh huh. And it got to the point where I was kind of running low on slugs. You know, I'd been out there maybe 10 nights in a row and it was, they were getting few and far between, you know, <laughs> maybe finding just a few of the little tiny ones and that was uh -huh. it. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go off over here to the side where the creek is away from the garden and you know it's more wet that way and maybe i'll find mm -hmm. some over there so i get over there and there's like this pile this wad of slugs oh. and there's three kinds of slugs there's the the leopard slug which is really fast they, they're the first ones to try and escape my pan mm -hmm. and then there's the brown european slugs but they're very shy and they just kind of curl up into a ball and stay that way forever mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then there's the green banana slugs which are my favorite they're so beautiful the, the the ones that are indigenous here yeah and uh so yeah this collection of slugs was all wadded together all the different kinds and and sizes and just a wad and of course there was like two of the leopard slugs were already leaving you know no, were, oh my god they were on their way out of the pile but the rest were still just kind of in a lump and i'm thinking well this is so weird you know yeah, I I didn't realize that slugs did things like this, especially you know, like with the different varieties. Yes, yeah. Even, you know? yeah. So how weird is that? So you know, I picked them up and I put them in my pan, and I went maybe not even six feet, and here's another pile of slugs. Oh my god! Has a couple of the the bigger leopard slugs are already crawling away from it, and and that's when it it clicked. Oh. Oh, these are gifts. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm running out of slugs. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. That's so adorable. as I was removing them from the yard, they were bringing them back, you know. Yeah. But, you know <laughs> there you it, go. It was our nightly routine. They couldn't have me running out, you know. So, <laughs> and then, you know, I'd go across the road and I'd fling the slugs out into that compost heap and wish them a good life and tell them to stay there. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> But I didn't Aww. expect they'd get a ride back. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and then there was so uh, about cute. that same season we got back from the blues and I came in and um, I had left my, my flip-flops on the porch, walked inside, went back out five minutes later and there's a, a one of the brown uh, European ones oh. was in the heel of my shoe, still curled up <laughs> in this little slimy ball. You know, no trail to the shoe. Oh, no. Right, Except right. Had, you know, it's like, oh, welcome home. Have a slug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Oh, and thank God that you saw it, people. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I am particularly fond of the, you know, like the banana slugs. I mean, they're they're beautiful. Yeah. So um, they know that I like them. And, uh, you know, they give you whatever's convenient, I guess. And Yeah. Yeah. Having slugs in the yard kept me going out at night. So, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> well, I hope mine mine can come and get the slugs out of my yard and bring them to your yard. Oh, you know they relocate eat everything. to green water. All right, the habitats yeah. cross the road. <laughs> Not yeah. over here. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's so, my slug story. That's cute. That's yeah, that was really cute. <laughs> and it's amazing that they you ask and you shall receive yeah. with the Sasquatch. That's well, adorable. you know, that's one thing I always tell our campers is, you know, put your intentions out. If you want to have an experience, you know, put put that out there, the kind of experience you want to have, you know, and, and be specific, you know, if you need a little space or distance, or this needs to be a daylight thing, you know, mm -hmm. state that, you know, if, if you don't want them poking you in the ribs while you're sleeping in your tent at night, yeah. say so. <laughs> Sitting you know, on your hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. if you're yeah. open to everything, make sure they know that. And if you're not, make sure they know that too. But, you know, it's, it, it's a lot about putting out your intentions. What's, what's a good thing for you. And, and, uh, stating what you what what your purpose is and um what your boundaries are going to be yeah. so i have few boundaries especially <laughs> when it comes to slugs i like my slugs <laughs> <laughs> you ready to do that grizzly you ready to no not yet no. I even oh. got me a good call box, and then Ron's like, "Do not call, make call sounds." And I'm like, "Why? You don't know what you're going to be calling in, or what are you going to be doing? Yeah, it's going to be a fight, or it's going to be a mating song, or a mate call." Yes, you, I'm like, "You Great. don't need any of that. That stuff's disrespectful. Yeah. Just talk to them. Just mm -hmm. use your own voice and holler out and say hello. Yeah, I'm here, and this is what I'm doing." Coming yeah. yeah, then I get a response and I'm going to be black and I'm going to turn back and you're all going to be laughing at me with no hair on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get zapped. So. <laughs> well, be specific. <laughs> uh, Joanne yeah. Jackson just came into the chat and she's laughing so Joanne, uh, you got to go back and replay this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So Sonia just says just manifested. Yeah, you manifest a lot of stuff. So I'm worried about you. <laughs> Man, when she plays with fire. Oh my lord. Mm. All Poor kinds Luna. Of yeah, I tell you. Uh, Amy. What a show, ladies and gentlemen. I never know what Barb and Barb is gonna do. <laughs> well, we have a lot to draw from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah. I'm going to have nightmares. Oh. <laughs> well. oh, Lord have mercy, yes. So I'm going to um, Sasquatch Fest in Forks. Forks Sasquatch oh. Fest. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. Yep, we leave oh, tomorrow. Congratulations. We'll I wish I was going. Thanks. It's yeah, it's my first. Well, yeah, because this is the second one. Yeah, I I wasn't able to go last year, so I'm looking forward to it. I yeah. wish I could That's go. Awesome. You're gonna have a blast. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. Boy, you have any... she has some stories. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any um that you that you go to in in you know in the general area, Barb? Um, well, I used to go out to the Sasquatch Summit out at Ocean Shores every year until, uh, until COVID hit and, uh, yeah. they brought it back last year, but I didn't make it out there. Um, I've been to the one over in Yakima a few times okay. and, uh, no, it just, my husband's got a, got a job where he just can't really mm -hmm. just take off and have yeah. me take off without having, you know, pre-planned and I, I try to save all that for my camp outs so yes yes exactly yeah, yeah. Ho hopefully he'll be retired here in the next year and, and that'll uh open us up to be able to go do a lot more of these things yeah yeah that'd be awesome uh, mm -hmm. yep yeah <laughs> really want to go to forks yeah you're gonna have yeah. a blast you'll yeah, see some I mean, of our campers there so you'll have to ask oh, about, okay, uh, get cool. some other opinions on our, our camp out from last week I'm sure you'll hear oh, okay. about it yeah cool yeah that's yeah. great awesome <laughs> all right <laughs> i know well, there's at least ladies five ladies gentlemen. from the group are getting are gonna be there okay cool yeah awesome you'll have to send me their names yes so i'll look for them okay or they'll yeah. find you awesome. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah okay well thanks so much barb for yeah joining thank us you for again. coming on the show again Gosh, you're welcome we anytime, anytime. Yes, yeah a blast thank you Definitely. so much thank you you have thank a good you. one yeah. you too bye all right bye-bye bye, -bye. Thank you. bye. <laughs>
So what's his name? Put his car almost in the ditch. So <laughs> John. Yeah, he's like, oh. when I heard the cooler, it was all it took for me to put the car oh. in the ditch. <laughs> yeah. So yes, <laughs> then I found out that Sonia is playing with fire. I was like, wow, yeah. oh, wow, she's she's just a woman of many talents. Uh, <laughs> how of beautiful. course, I never forget that. So that was great. Yeah, but you know what? Like Barb ran into the same thing with her campers. I can't believe they're like, look I know, at look at the stick. Like, look at the last one. Like, isn't that what we're here for? <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Amy, I'm glad that you all have some good laughs off of us. I yeah, really am. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> and I could, I could imagine Barb trying to do some measurements on that, on that book, <laughs> on, that, on that butt. But that, that, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. We will never Where? see the footage on the show. So, <laughs> yeah, Sean, I'll tell we'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barb will I see did. the picture. I will yeah. guarantee you that. Yes. The two that I that I found, who they are big. They're really big. Oh, <laughs> big butts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen from Ghost to Coast, the Brown World, we love you guys. And y'all take care. What do you think, Thanks, Barb? Thanks, everybody. All Bye. right. Have a good take, night. Thanks. Yeah, Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs>